What if I told you a wastewater treatment plant operator's primary goal is to find balance? You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. Okay, so that's a little epic. I'm more talking about the balance between the incoming biochemical oxygen demand, otherwise known as the food in the incoming wastewater, and the microorganisms in our activated sludge system, also known as the mixed liquor volatile suspended solids. Today, we're gonna tackle the reverse food to microorganism ratio in which we already know our incoming BOD concentration. We know a target food to microorganism ratio that our plant works at best. And what we're gonna figure out is how many pounds of MLVSS we should be running in our aeration basin and by definition, what our aeration basin MLSS should be. Lastly, when we figure that math problem out, we are going to figure out how to attain that food to microorganism ratio if we are out of our parameter. Welcome to the Wastewater Enthusiast YouTube channel, everybody. If you're new here and you want more information on all things wastewater treatment, please hit that subscribe button. If you get anything out of this lesson, throw me a like, let me know that this helped you out and that you appreciate this type of content. Now, let's get over to the whiteboard and start working out this math problem. Right now, right now, conference room. Okay, here we are at the math problem section of this video. Um, after we're done, like I said in the intro, after we're done here, we're going to talk about how to actually attain that F to M ratio. If you are off a little bit, we're gonna briefly talk about small adjustments and then I'm gonna take you into the plant for a visual demonstration of a large adjustment. So let's read this math problem real quick. The influent flow rate to a treatment facility is 3 MGD with a BOD concentration of 250 milligrams per liter. The primary clarifier effluent is 140 milligrams per liter. The aeration tank volume is 800,000 gallons and the desired food to microorganism ratio is 0.15 pounds per day BOD per pound MLVSS. Determine the MLVSS in pounds and the MLSS concentration in milligrams per liter given that 70% of the MLSS is volatile. So let's talk about this for a second. Let's remember what the F to M ratio even is. It's pounds of BOD per day entering the plant divided by, or actually entering aeration, I should say. It's a key difference between what's entering the plant and what's entering aeration. Divided by the pounds of MLVSS in aeration. Okay, so in this situation, I'm gonna be able to, I know what my pounds BOD per day are coming in because I'm given that in the math problem. So that's gonna be three times 8.34 times 140 milligrams per liter. I'll discuss this in a second. And I know my target F to M ratio is 0.15. So my goal here is to figure out my pounds MLVSS and aeration and then convert that to an MLSS concentration so I know the MLSS I should be running in my aeration basin to achieve a 0.15, simply put. Now, why don't I just stop at the MLVSS? Because nobody runs an MLVSS concentration in their aeration basin. Sure, you run it in the lab so you can know what your volatile, you know, your volatile matter is in your MLSS, but I've never been to a plant and talked to them about their MLVSS concentration in aeration. I ask them what their MLSS is. That's very typical, okay? The MLSS is everything in the mixed liquor, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is the first step is to figure out the pounds BOD per day, which I've actually already written that out. Time out. If you don't know what the pounds formula is, you need to pause the video right now. An info card should have just popped up in the upper corner of your screen. Click on it, go learn the pounds formula because I'm about to lose you if you don't understand how the pounds formula works. The card I linked to is to the Davidson Pie style and in the description of this video, I will link to a different version where I actually draw the units out if that's how your brain works and you wanna know how the units actually cancel out, go check that video out. You cannot proceed with this math problem until you understand the pounds formula. Okay, with that, time in. Three MGD times 8.34 pounds, um, pounds per gallon of water times 140 milligrams per liter. Why did I go with 140 and not 250? Because this is the primary clarifier effluent, this is what's going into aeration. I don't care what the BOD going into the plant was if I know what's going into aeration, it's irrelevant. So just pay attention to that. If I work that out on my calculator, that should come out to, if you plug that in, it's 3,503 if you round to the nearest whole number, pounds of BOD per day. So there's two ways to get to the MLVSS pounds. I'm gonna show you the easy way first and then I'm gonna show you a more thorough way where you kind of understand the number a little bit better. So the first is 3,503 divided by 0.15, and that should give you 23,353 pounds of MLVSS. Wow, that was easy. I'm already there. 
boom. It's just a pounds formula and divide by the ratio in decimal form. So let me just take you with, uh, through a more thorough way so I can ex you actually understand what's going on here. One, which is a whole number. If you have a ratio, there, you, you're trying to fill in that number one, right? Um, one divided by 0.15. If you were to do that, it gives you 6.6, continued 6.67 um, pounds of MLVSS. Okay, so this would be one per one pound of BOD, you have 6.67 pounds of MLVSS, okay? And let me just demonstrate this to you because that's, I think this confuses people. They don't actually understand what's going on here. And I don't think I'm totally explaining it well. So let me do a little math to explain it a little better. If I was to take 3,503 pounds of BOD per day entering the plant and multiply it by 6.66666, or I'll round it up to 6.67, what does that give me? Throw it in your calculator times 6.67 gives me 23,365. Very, very close to this other number. This actually just comes down to a rounding difference, these two numbers here, okay? 12 pounds in aeration is nothing. <laughs> that's, that's minuscule. Um, so this is two different ways to get there. In essence, what's going on is, like I said already, for every one pound of BOD, I've got 6.67 pounds of MLVSS in aeration. That's it. So. Now that I've already got my 23,353 pounds of MLVSS and I've already solved half of this problem, I now need to convert that to an MLSS concentration. So let's go to that step next. 23,353 divided by 0.7. Why did I do that? Because 70% of the MLSS is volatile. I know my volatile concentrate, or not concentration, I know my volatile pounds, I want my MLSS pounds, and how I would get that is to divide by 0.7, okay? And so that would give me 23,353 divided by 0.7, careful here, 33,361. I said be careful because I button mashed an earlier version of this video and got a totally wrong answer. Um, and how you check your work on this is just multiply by, you know that this is the full number of the MLSS pounds, um, multiply by 0.7 would give you 70% of it and it would take you right back to this number right here, okay? Um, if you're confused about that, put it in the comments below. Now simply, I do a reverse pounds formula to get my concentration of MLSS. Um, those of you who wanna do the Davidson Pie, check out that video I linked to a little earlier on the info card. Um, and, and if you didn't get that info card, you can go ahead and check the description below. I'll plop it in the description as well. Um, to do the Davidson Pie version of this, I would do 33,361 pounds MLSS and then the concentration of milligrams per liter goes here, aeration tank or pound of water here 8.34 and pound of, or sorry, <laughs> volume of aeration 0 0.8 mg. Wow, where did I get that? The aeration tank volume is 800,000 gallons. 800 divided by a million is 0.8 mg. Got to go back to that pounds formula if you don't know what I'm doing there. I explain everything in that video. So I actually write it out like this, 33,361. I don't do the, the pi anymore. Um, I just do it linear. 0.8 mg divided by 8.34. It's gonna give you the same number no matter how you do this. 361 divided by 0.8 divided by 8.34 gives me 5,000 on the nose milligrams per liter. That is the concentration I should be running in aeration. We have solved this math problem. Okay, great, 5,000 milligrams per liter. What now? There's a few things we can do to actually adjust the food to microorganism ratio if we need to, all right? So there's some smaller scale things I'm gonna talk about here with you. And then lastly, I'm gonna take you out to the plant for a visual demonstration of something you would do on a larger scale food to microorganism adjustment. So there's really only two things we can play with here. And that would be the MLSS concentration and the BOD concentration. So the MLSS concentration is going to be more common and easier. The BOD adjustments would be harder and less common. So an operator has a few tools at their disposal if they are focusing on the MLSS concentration. That would be your return activated sludge rate and your wasting rate. I'm going to be doing videos on both of those. So if you want to be notified when they come out, go ahead and subscribe. I'm not gonna get into crazy detail today to keep the video shorter, but this is gonna be kind of a bird's eye view. If you increase your RAS rate, you will move more microbes from the secondary clarifier into aeration.
okay? Your mixed liquor would say be 4,500 and you wanted to get to 5,000, you would increase your RAS rate, putting more microorganisms in MLSS in your aeration basin. Conversely, if you wanted to lower it, say I was at 5,500 milligrams per liter, I wanna to go to 5,000, you could back it off. Now, for those of you who have worked in an activated sludge plant, you can tell this could be somewhat dubious and I will get into that in that other video I will do on return rate. The one I like to use is the wasting rate. Here, say I was at 4,500 milligrams per liter and I wanna to go to 5,000, all things being equal, I can simply just waste less. Don't wait, stop wasting entirely, but waste less. Small adjustments over a longer period of time to slowly get to 5,000. The other way around, if I was at 5,500, I would waste more. Get more microorganisms out and get from 5,500 milligrams per liter MLSS to 5,000. Again, all things being equal, assuming my BOD isn't fluctuating all over the place. The general rule is, if you waste more, your F to M ratio goes up because when you're wasting, you are removing microorganisms from the system. And when you do that, there is more food to go around. So by definition, your food to microorganism ratio goes up. When you waste less, your food to microorganism ratio goes down because those bugs multiply and there will be less food to go around, simply put. Now, take my membrane bioreactor. I have one train, I have one aeration basin, and it needs to stay at a certain MLSS for the membranes to function properly. So can I waste a ton out or can I let it get super thick? I might not wanna do that because if I waste a ton out, my membranes might blind, they might not work well. And if I let it get really super thick, my membranes might blind and my blower costs are gonna go through the roof trying to keep all that biomass alive and the dissolved oxygen at a place it needs to be. So what's the next thing I could do? I could adjust my BOD. Oh, hey. Just pulling some MLSS out of the aeration basin so I can run a quick laboratory procedure. You know, since you're here, figured it's worth telling you, what you're getting ready to hear on adding BOD to fix your F to M ratio is highly unusual. If you're taking an exam or even just starting as a wastewater operator, the best way to adjust your F to M ratio is through wasting more if you need to or wasting less if you need to. Managing your biomass is the best way. But what you're getting ready to hear are viable ways if you need to do them. Okay, they're very costly and they're very unusual, but figured I'd tell you. All right, thanks for visiting me out here. Enjoy the rest of the lecture. I'm heading to the lab. So say I want my F to M ratio to go up. In this case, I would add food. I would add BOD, typically using a chemical called methanol. There are some other ways you could do it, but this is going to be more of your textbook way. And you will see this actually commonly used in anoxic zones to help with denitrification, okay? The other thing you might do, if I need my F to M ratio to go down, I need to remove food, I might go to dischargers that are known to have strong concentrations of BOD in industries, for instance, and tell them they need to put in a plant. And you need to knock that BOD down before it comes to me. That's pretty common. And the other thing that I might do is chemically enhance primary treatment, where I would introduce a flocculant or a coagulant to the primary clarifier and pull some of that soluble BOD out of solution and settle it out. I did a whole, a conversation about this on my coagulation flocculation video and on my primary treatment part two. We talked about this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna throw info cards up on the screen for both of those and I'll link to them in the description below. So those are some adjustments you can make on a you know smaller scale, not massive swings in, in F to M. Um, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out in the plant and I'm gonna give you a visual representation of what you might do if you're experiencing a significant increase in the food to microorganism ratio or the significant decrease. Let's go. So I'm out here in the plant standing on the dividing line between two basins. I've got one to my left and one to my right. The one on my right is empty. The one on my left is in service, okay? So let's take that math problem and say we've got our 3,500 pounds of BOD coming into the plant. But let's say it's a seasonal flow, like something like a state park might experience or even my town, which is a touristy town, experiences significantly higher and more concentrated flows in the summer than we do in the off seasons like the fall and the spring and even the winter, although storm events can cause a ruckus. <laughs> so let's say that I've got this one in service and this one's out of service. And that 3,500 pounds of BOD turns into 7,000 pounds of BOD like that, like almost like a switch flips. And what that does is it moves my F to M ratio from 0.15 
2.3, and that's not where I wanna be. I'm at 0.15 for a reason, probably because I'm doing some sort of biological nutrient removal. So what would I do in that situation? I would put this basin online, okay? So I would seed it with microorganisms, I would aerate it, and I would introduce flow, and when I do that, my flow is now split between two basins, therefore my food to microorganism ratio goes down because I multiplied my bugs and now I've got more microorganisms for that larger food influx for whatever reason. It could have been increased flows, increased com concentrations, or a combination of both. Now, rewind the tape. What do I do if I've got two basins online and my F to M ratio goes from a 0.15 to a 0.05 because my food got cut in half. You know, I've got two basins online and my 7,000 pounds of BOD coming into the plant every day turned into 3,500. What do I do? Just the opposite. Take it offline. I would waste these bugs out, clean out the basin, and put it on standby for the next influx that might happen. So that's a little picture into a more larger scale <laughs> F to M swing, is you would have multiple basins to take on and offline. Now, remember, when you put on an aeration basin, you probably need to put on another clarifier. Um, there's some stuff we'll get into when we start talking about secondary clarification. I kind of hinted at RAS return rates and how it can get really a little sticky if you don't do it right. So um, if I'm putting on a second aeration basin, I'm putting on a second clarifier. So something to keep in mind. Okay, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below and we will definitely catch you in the next video. Have a great day, everybody.